do this. I want to update you on her COVID in this county. And I think you hear about it every day, but I'm going to get a kind of concisely update you. As of today, this weekend, uh, there were the United States had 25 million cases of COVID. Georgia had 718,000 and 11, almost 12,000 confirmed deaths. The good news there is in the last seven days, we've had a 20% decrease seven day running total. We've had decreased antigen positive, we've had decreased 20% laboratory positive, and we've had a 30% decrease in the number of hospitalizations in the last seven days. South Hills District, total number, we've had 23,000 cases. Uh, of these, we've had 366 deaths in the district. The current total by county allowance had 6,651 confirmed cases. And of these, uh, total number of deaths is 107. Uh, in our district, we've had 50, almost 16,000. Coincidentally with this, the total number of vaccines given uh, in our county by the Department of Public Health at this point is around 6,000. I read last night that the hospital was given around three to 4,000. Uh, I'll get back to that in just a minute. <clears throat> As of yesterday, there were 62 inpatients at South Georgia Medical Center, and that was down from 93 inpatients about two weeks ago. So we maybe have turned the curve to a certain extent again. Uh, I want to just sort of share something with you right here. I know most of you here, I know probably all of you here are younger than I am. I want to read you something about a disease that was around when I was a boy. It's called polio. 60 years ago, polio was one of the most feared diseases in the United States. As the weather warmed up, panic over polio intensified. Late summer was polio season. Public swimming pools were shut down. Movie theaters were shut. Uh, you couldn't go to church. Insurance companies started selling polio insurance for newborn. And the terrible thing about this disease, it didn't actually kill you. It paralyzed you for the rest of your life. Had an aunt. It was paralyzed from her waist down at 36 years of age. She was a beautiful athletic lady. Uh, I knew children who were in the iron lung. Anybody remember what the iron lung was? We have respirators today. Back in those days, there was no such thing as respirators in the iron lung. And, and I actually went to, when she was at Warm Springs, where, where FDR, of course, uh, had polio, I think you knew that. And she was at Warm Springs, and she was in rehab there. We went up to visit her. And that was during my childhood, and I vividly remember that in the 1950s. I remember vividly when my grandfather, who was a physician, gave me my first dose of the soft saving vaccine. And at that point, we were all getting, for the first time, something that might prevent this disease. Uh, how many cases have you all heard of polio in the last year? In the United States, maybe 10 at most. You wouldn't have heard about these. And or uh, you can also say, well, why, why is that happening? And I'm going to tell you, it's called vaccine. Uh, also, where are measles, mumps, rubella, Zika, yellow fever, chicken pox, hepatitis A and B, shingles? Why don't we hear C? Have our kids have these, adults have these anymore? Because of vaccines. I want to give you a little timeline on our vaccination timeline in this, in this area, in this district. We were told Friday, December the 11th, uh, by December the 18th, when vaccines were first to become available, to be ready to vaccinate, and we ramped up. The first vaccination was given on December the 18th, and the district staff was instructed to start with Cure 1A, which were long-term care facilities, uh, and the, of course, essential work, uh, healthcare workers at that point, which is determined by the CDC's American College, uh, Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices. We can then continue vaccinating uh, through the end of December. We realized there were two short weeks there uh, because of two holidays. We were told on Thursday, December the 30th, uh, less than a month ago, to expand vaccination to phase 1A+. 1A+, added tens of thousands of people who were eligible for the vaccine in our district hundreds of thousands in this state. Uh, overnight, we almost heard about that. We had approximately a week to 10 days to ramp up for that. We opened online registration for callback to set up an appointment. We have to have appointments because we have to know how many people are coming in because this vaccine, once you open this bottle, Pfizer, 
five doses thawed out. Moderna, 10 doses thawed out. Once you've thawed it out, it's, by the end of the day, if you have not used those five or 10 doses, you have to throw it in the trash can. It cannot be, it cannot be refrozen. And, and I won't go into details why this is not something you can set on the shelf. If Johnson & Johnson becomes available, and I read yesterday, in about hopefully two, maximum three months it will be, uh, Johnson & Johnson can be stored at normal refrigerator temperature and actually be kept for, uh, in that refrigerator for up to three months. But the ones right now, if we don't use them by the end of the day, that's why we have appointments, we have to discard them. I will tell you, a month into this now, South Health District, we have not yet wasted a single dose. We found that we have a spare list. If we can get somebody in at the end of the day, we got an extra dose in the vial. For somebody didn't show up, it just happened in the last couple of weeks, and we've got more people vaccinating now. And or they may get to go to the place they can get a little bit earlier. We've had a few that would not show up for their appointment, so we had some leftover vaccines. Having said that, we have found somebody to come in the health department within an hour. And in that hour, which is like from 3.30 to 4.30 in the afternoon, we, we, we give it to somebody who's eligible. Nevertheless, we opened up our registration for callback on December the 31st, and by Monday morning, we had 1,500 people to call back three days later. And that has evolved and has continued to evolve over the last month, saying that uh, we started that and we started off and we got up to 270 doses a day at the health department here in Belmasta. Uh, and we opened our, and, and the chairman was out there last week with us, we opened a drive-through uh, last Monday. Uh, lo and behold, we ran out of adequate vaccines to get a first vaccination. We realized that last Wednesday, if we didn't get more, we didn't get more on Thursday, and therefore we announced on Friday that we were not any longer giving first vaccines. We were holding for those who had gotten the first vaccine so they could get the second vaccine. <clears throat> and by the way, Johnson & Johnson is one vaccine, one, sh one shot, not two shots. And that has complicated things even more than it does require two shots. A coordination of organization in an incredible amount of time. Now, 1A, 1A versus 1A plus included fire personnel, dispatchers, now 11 operators, and 65 uh, adults, 65 and older, and their caregivers. We did decide to limit caregivers uh, to one per patient. The reason for that is we have some families that would say, well, there would be eight or nine members of the family, and eight of them would say they were all caregivers of that one patient, uh, saying that we didn't have adequate vaccine to be able to do every caregiver. Uh, we opened the drive-through, as I said, last Monday, and we started on January the 22nd, last Thursday, canceling first vaccines in Lounge and in Bury. Again, 1A plus is where we are now. I just talked to you about it. Again, this is just the turn of our committee. And then the governor added the extra 1A plus. The advisory committee was 1A. And I told you that included, of course, uh, the, the other people who were not initially in 1A. And that was uh, the fire enforcement, law enforcement, fire personnel, volunteer fire departments, and 911 operators. Uh, saying that, we, we of course, uh, had started that and did it, and we wanted to more or less report to you, as I said earlier, that we get it now approximately six one seven thousand 7,000 doses of the health department the hospital outside of us, 3,000 doses. And because I just pointed to you what happened to smallpox, what happened to polio, which was vaccine, the United States, uh, of course, now has 400,000 coronavirus deaths. And we we and we've had 30 million vaccine doses uh, rolled out, half of them so far. But there's been a delay in, in the way they have been distributed. Now I'm going to go into uh, to details of what I've read is why there was a delay. Uh, public health departments uh, have been flooded with phone calls and emails for appointment. Medical uh, providers are feeling this increased demand too, including South Georgia Medical Center. South Georgia Medical Center site, when it opened about two weeks ago, I looked on there, you could get an appointment within two days. I looked last Thursday, you could not get an appointment in Lowndes County. The only ones open there were the very near, near campuses, and they were scheduling into February. We actually, when we stopped taking appointments last week, we were scheduling to the very first, first part of March with first dose vaccines. So, so saying all that, we, we, this is, I, we never dreamed, I never dreamed that in my lifetime, I couldn't have, I couldn't hug my grandkids, 
Uh, I couldn't go to dinner with friends. I couldn't have Christmas with family. I couldn't hug people that I love. I, I never dreamed that would happen in my lifetime again. Uh, I vaguely remember in the summer of polio in the 50s being scared to go out. My mother, we couldn't go to church. We couldn't go swim in the community pool. Uh, we couldn't go to the, to the theater and or there was serious worry about that. Saying that, I said to you that we're turning the corner here again. Back in October, we were down to 5% positivity out of the specimens for like 5%. And we, around the holidays, for any of numerous <clears throat> reasons, we, we got up to last week 24% positivity. It was one out of every four people that were tested. Now, back in October, it was one out of every 20 in this county. We are seeing that today and yesterday are down to 13%, even 11% that I saw yesterday. And I've told you about the vaccines. I told you about the difficulty of giving the vaccines. And if we get, and the second dose being the one that we're holding now since we don't have the first dose. Uh, that being said, when we were promised a million doses uh, in the first 100 days of the, of the new uh, presidency, uh, we were already doing a million a day. So getting to, to 100 days in 100 days was really a foregone conclusion at that point. Saying that uh, we know there was vac vaccination chaos, uh, lots of reasons. I've read about that. Uh, a lot of it has to do, again, with two doses and or uh, communication and or administration and or micromanagement and or lack of uh, coordination throughout the nation. The so ones that have given the most, actually, uh, I'm not making a political statement here, are Israel and the United Kingdom. The one thing that is that they have that we don't have is the national health system. Saying that I, right now, again, we appear to be turning the corner again in, in, in this district, in this county, and even in the state. Uh, we do know that if we're going to get a hold of this, if we're going to get to the point that we can be and act normally, and we don't have to wear these things everywhere we go, and we, we, can, we can hug our grandchildren, we can be with our families, we can go out to eat, we can go to the movie, uh, and restaurants we can enjoy being with, with friends. If we're ever going to get back there, it's going to be through vaccine. You say the virus is mutated. The virus is mutated. So does the flu. I just read this morning uh, that that it already said this to people. More than likely, it's going to require booster votes. We do know now that the vaccination it lasts at least the, the antibodies that are that are formed by the body last at least six months. We know that do know the virus is mutating like the flu virus does. The vaccine makers can tweak the virus and it may have to be like the flu. Every year it's tweaked a little bit. Again, we're learning. It was January the 20th that the first case of COVID was diagnosed of last year, January the 20th, first. And here we are now into incredible 25 million numbers. That being said, Mr. Chairman, I have a great amount of hope for this country, for this world. I would hope that more people, and they are coming on board initially when we offered it to 240 members of the health department at the very beginning, we had 40 takers. I've said before, it's, and, they saw, and I was the first one, and they saw that I didn't drop dead over the weekend. All right, they decided then that there are a few more taken, and at this point, more than half, almost 60% have taken it. We see now that the that originally about 30% of the American public was said they would take it at this point, the last uh, that I saw over the weekend, about 60% of the American public would take it. We hope that it gets to more than that, at least 80 or 90%, at which point it could be just sort of an endemic process that may or may not be seasonal. We don't know about that. Polio is a summertime disease, so it's a flu. We're not sure about this disease yet. If that will happen right now, it was just as prevalent in some of him and some of him uh, in the southern hemisphere as it was in the normal hemisphere, which is cold, hot, cycling, uh, and you know that. So we don't see that it's peculiarly, peculiarly connected with a specific uh, season. Saying that we can do this, Mr. Chairman, we have to. We have to look at signs. We have to look at figures. We have to look at. Those who don't remember their past are doomed to repeat it. They look at polio, look at smallpox, measles, look at hepatitis, and realize where we are with those diseases today. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much, Dr. Grove. We certainly appreciate it. Uh, I would add this uh, for the folks out there that have some apprehension about taking the vaccine. 
uh, when the health department started scheduling uh, the tier 1A plus, uh, I signed up uh, based on my age. Uh, got a quick appointment. Uh, it was scheduled for last Wednesday. At the same time, I had an opportunity to visit the drive through process out at the Civic Center. Uh, well organized, wonderful staff, all of them extremely nice, extremely helpful. Went through that, uh, visit that process out there, went through it, got my vaccination, and other than just a little uh, injection site tenderness in the left arm, absolutely no side effects whatsoever. So um, I have no concern or no, no apprehension for anyone that's willing to take the vaccine because I agree completely um, with Dr. Grove is that we have to get folks vaccinated, we have to get through this process, and then whatever and however it develops, if it develops into a booster type shot that we have to take, it's going to be no different than battling the flu. Uh, it, again, it's a choice that we make um, and we should make it. I know in our business we offer it to all of our employees. We don't get 100%, but the ones that wants to take it or has the opportunity to take it and it helps businesses and industries as well to uh, curtail the infection that it's able to, we're able to keep our employees at work and safe and that's what this economy is built on is it's built on our employees and the structures that we have so uh, we have an obligation to help what we can dr grow and your staff again i want to commend you for the great job that you've done here in Lowndes county and the entire south hill district uh, but it's uh, you've done a yeoman's lift and you're still lifting and we need a few more breaks and a little bit of help and we can get through this process. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat>